Hello everybody and welcome to Prehistoric Kingdom's new dev diary for August of 2023. And as you can tell by the picture in front of you, we have a new dinosaur coming to update 9 with the grassland biome. So let's not waste any time and begin. So let's just, I'm just going to read what it said on the dev diary and um, yeah. So. That's right, a digital art book and mini soundtrack will be released onto Steam later this year to coincide with one of our next major updates. Whether you'd like to appreciate the work of our artists or listen to some Jurassic Jams, we'll have you covered. The Art of Prehistoric Kingdom. Over 100 pages of concept art and insight to the development process, exploring not just animals, but guests, structures, and more. Includes artists' interviews, notes, and exclusive artwork. So you can see this one here, you've got um, a bit on the T-Rex and the Triceratops. So that looks like artwork for potential hunting. Later on, you can see a walk in the park just there. So eligible for backers will... Oh, okay, so eligible backers will receive Steam codes to redeem their products. Both items will be available to purchase by a bundle or separately on Steam. Soundtrack will be available to purchase through Steam or Bandcamp. Okay. <laughs> a walk in the park music from prehistoric kingdom 30 minutes of music from challenge mode the animal nursery and opening tutorial 15 tracks including four bonus map medleys and updated arrangements for challenge mode tracks yeah, so that seems sounds interesting if you're ever interested in listening to some prehistoric kingdom music or looking at the detail that goes into the art involved with the game that will Certainly pique your interest, but um, yes, yeah, so you got a bit on the Dilophosaurus and the Dryosaurus here. Love the meanings of the names just there. Okay, so before talking about animals in Update 8, let's quickly discuss how things are going. To start, there have been a bunch of under-the-hood improvements to improve the game's stability across the board, with many hopefully going on to address numerous crash reports. Guests have also been further improved since last month, now including a fully complete queuing system and more fluid navigation. This means that your visitors should be less likely to clump up and must patiently wait their turn to use interaction points. Imagine a conveyor belt, but for humans. I don't really want to, but... <laughs> In basically every area, guests are vastly more robust, and as a result, the economy should be much more stable too. It might surprise you, but all of this work on guests is actually being done in preparation for staff. We're not quite ready to publicly talk about our plans for staff yet, but from a development perspective, staff are functionally just special guests with some unique abilities and navigation rules. Once the long-awaited animal rework has been released in Update 8, we'll be diving straight into development on staff, including mechanics for one of the game's new central pillars, logistics management. This is an evolution of the produce station gameplay we spoke of in June's dev diary, now better designed to work with staff integration. Please stay tuned for more news on staff over the coming months. But for now, let's talk animals. So the animal rework has been progressing very well. We made um, great headway with animals in August, and we got them wandering around and recognizing interactables with the new locomotion systems. Animals make choices depending on their internal statistics like stamina, endurance, health, and metabolism. These stats push and pull on an animal's needs, determining when they should rest, find food, and how long their meal will last before they must eat again. Seemingly simple mechanics like this weren't part of the old AI system, and will have a huge impact on future features like hunting. Perhaps the biggest downside to all this AI work is that it's very hard to visualize not only in dev logs, but even while we're working on it. To help us, we've built robust editor tooling that allows us to more accurately debug and see what animals are doing. This viewer shows a series of tasks animals must complete to accomplish their main goal, shifting columns depending on what is the priority. Tools like this are crucial as we make animals more reactive and lively. Speaking of, we've been working towards improving how additive and behavioral animations are handled. The goal is to let the AI contextually decide when to play animals so that animals can oh, play animations so that animals sorry about that can better express themselves. E.g. socializing, becoming angry, resting, rather than relying on simple timers as per the current implementation. On top of this, we're working towards a basic herding implementation that will allow animals to form social groups. Each species has its own natural group sizing, whether that's a large herd, organized pack, or, simple, or small pairing. 
The AI will naturally form multiple groups within the habitat if there are too many individuals of a given species, laying the potential foundation for future combat encounters and territorial disputes. This is an area we'll definitely be expanding upon down the line once fighting is in. Update timeline. In a couple of weeks, we should be able to give you a concrete release date for update 8. Once the system side of the animal rework has been completed, we will not only need to port the current creatures over, but thoroughly test and ensure they're park ready. After the release of update 8, we'll be able to return to more regular content drops that add new species, pieces, and maps. There's not too much longer to wait. Whew, that was a big block of test. <laughs> Te test. Text. Yeah, was, that was a long read. <laughs> Okay, now on to the exciting part. This is where the fun begins, as they say. The park's newest guests will be arriving from the land down under. Can you hear the thunder? <laughs> say hello to Mudabarosaurus. So this is the one of the species that was teased a few months ago um, in one of the little new species being dug up sort of things where you saw the bumps on the back, it just with a different colour. But it looks very nice. Very accurate. I mean, I don't know if Mytobarosaurus really had those large nodules on the back, but um, overall, it looks fantastic. And I also can't wait to see this. <laughs> Love that reference. Land from dead, from the land down under. <laughs> yeah. That's my home, mate. <laughs> yeah, so Mytobarosaurus, Mytobarosaurus, Mytobarosaurus Langdoni. So, um, yeah. I love this particular, this picture in particular okay so this iconic australian dinosaur lived during the early cretaceous period measuring it at around eight meters long despite walking on only two legs mudabarosaurus can be seen adopting a quadrupedal stance while drinking or going to lay down like other members of its group this animal is best characterized by its large protruding nose giving way to some particularly snuffly vocalizations and snorts mudabarosaurus will be making its way into your parks once update 9 is released so this is one of the three species being added into update 9, which will be focused on the grasslands. Now we just need to know what those other two species are. And we'll probably be finding out about those in consecutive order, or they'll each be a month apart, because I think Dilophosaurus, Coelophysis, and, and Skeletosaurus were all a month apart from one another. But either way, it certainly gets me more excited about the grassland update, other than the map itself. Like, the map looks fantastic. Um, they showed it off in um, a previous devlog. But yeah, I love how the Mudabarosaurus looks. Particularly this skin. This skin looks fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think of what it's inspired by. Like, I can see the leopard in there. Leopard or jaguar pattern. And I love the splash of colour on the nose there. Interested if they'll be doing, like, what the Mudabarosaurus did in Walking with Dinosaurs, where it would inflate its nose and resonate its calls. That would be interesting, but I don't know if Mudabarosaurus really did that. But um, either way, it's a very cool looking species and will certainly make a fine addition into many parks. And um, yeah, it's just a little bit of the concept art here. Imagine if that was a skin. Jeez, that would be shiny. <laughs> but we get a look at some of the different skins there. So I think that middle one, um, in between the one with the red back and the um, spotty one at the top, that looks like to be the one that was shown in that picture that we got a while back. Um, same color, same colored back. But um, we've got one thing that I unfortunately was not able to get into this presentation because for some reason the Prehistoric Kingdom website was not working for me on my browser. But um, Update 9 will be introducing swimming. Now, this is very exciting because um, it does pave the way for potential additions of semi-aquatic species. So animals like Baryonyx, which is slated to be in the game, like we've seen it previously in um, previous devlogs, is coming and should be able to potentially deep dive. Um, or just swim better than most other dinosaurs. And same with Spinosaurus, which has been in the works for a long time. Not just in the game, paleontologically too, but um, it also makes way for animals like Sarcosuchus, Dinosuchus, potentially large amphibians like Coolosuchus too. Um, those would honestly be very fun to have in Prehistoric Kingdom. 
But um, I'll just read the text here. Along with new species, we've also been hard at work creating animation sets for the upcoming swimming behavior. Some animal groups are natural swimmers, graceful and efficient. Others are uh, thankful they haven't drowned yet. <laughs> Please look forward to seeing owls hit the water in update 9. So I wonder if any of the other two species will be confident swimmers. If you actually go onto the Prehistoric Kingdom website for Crytivo, well, no, no, it's just the Prehistoric Kingdom website, you'll actually be able to see um, videos of Matabarasaurus swimming and Coelophysis also swimming. So, um, yeah, the Matabarasaurus seems to be a very good swimmer, whereas the Coelophysis looks to be struggling a little bit. Like, it's only got tiny little legs. But, um, yeah, that is all for the Dev Diary for August. Um, certainly worth the wait. Like, we're getting swimming, we're getting Matabarasaurus, so our first Australian dinosaur for the game. And a completely new species as well. Not one that has been in the works for a long time. But um, yeah, looking forward to seeing this guy um, make it into the game. And let me know what you guys think of the new revelations in the prehistoric kingdom world. Are you excited for Matabarasaurus? Are you excited for swimming? The new animal rework, the new soundtrack, the art gallery for the concepts. Um, all of that, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.